that'll work <laughs> all right start this thing up in in three two one welcome back to the comic book bullies with nerd is the new bully i'm your host leroy aka giant size man thing uh with my co-host eli aka the bi beast oh i was gonna say the sensational she eli <laughs> oh well that'll work too goddamn sjw <laughs> <laughs> what i gotta replace eli with a woman <laughs> <laughs> uh, PC we were, bitches. Exactly. Yeah. Just anything to piss you off. So yeah, we, next week we're gonna be PC. We're gonna be uh both women. So yeah. Uh, what are we talking about? Yeah. Uh, okay. So big news been happening this week. All this bunch of crazy stuff. We had two giant size companies fighting over a property, and it's been flooding my timeline. And Eli, I'm sick of it. So we're gonna just get it out the air. So we can just talk about it. And it is Popeyes and Chick Fil A. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's all that's on my timeline right now. I'm pretty sure you've heard about it, too, right? I heard something about Popeyes. Yeah, you know, they released that chicken sandwich. There's a Yeah, there was a bunch of shit. Yeah, because there's a Popeyes right down the street from me. And it was, yeah, it was mad. And I'm pretty mad, sure it's, it's Mad bumping. Right. So you're like, what the fuck is going on? Why is Popeyes? Th-? So, yeah, Popeyes released a chicken sandwich. And for some reason, it blew up on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever like that. So everybody in the world is eating Popeye's chicken because they're saying it's better than Chick-fil-A, which everybody considered Chick-fil-A was the best chicken sandwich out, I guess. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I agree with that. I, Chick-fil-A. I, I, I was in, there was only, there was never Chick-fil-A up here where I am until like a couple years ago. Oh, really? Then, so you guys and, are missing out. Here's and then the I, I ate one and I wasn't impressed. Here's so. the thing about Chick-fil-A. <laughs> no, I'm a, before I started Chick-fil-A, I'm going to talk about Popeye's. So you got Popeye's, you got Chick-fil-A, everybody's battling over which has the better chicken sandwich. But here's my thing. So, you go if you, just like you said, people are flooding Popeyes right now to get these chicken sandwiches. If you go to Popeyes right now, a lot of Popeyes right now are sold out of chicken sandwiches. So how are you gonna go to a chicken place that's sold out of chicken? So yeah, that right up. there makes Chick Fil A the winner because here's the thing: Chick Fil A food is eh, okay. I love the lemonade, but you know what makes Chick Fil A stand out more than anybody else? You like? Um, that they hate gays or something. Like that it. too, but we <laughs> we excuse that <laughs> because they, even though they're homophobic, they do have the greatest customer service out of any fast food restaurant out there. Oh really? I thought they fucking were, aren't like open on Sundays and shit. That too, people love them because they're not open on Sundays and they're homophobic, but they have the best customer service. <laughs> <laughs> So you gotta you just let some stuff so, slide. So. Really, they, really, like after church, you don't want to head to Chick Fil A and get get a sandwich. And shit. You, you want to, but you can't. <laughs> oh, shit. Said, I'm in Mississippi. I'm in the Bible Belt, so they actually like endears people to them. Like, oh yeah, they have good core values, you know, because they're not open on Sundays, you know, and they hate gays. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so they have the best customer service. You go there, people are always smiling at you when you sit down at your desk. They don't call your number. They bring the food out to you. Actually, oh, shit. anything Cul- else. Culver's does that shit, man. I know, but I'm saying this is a fast food <laughs> chicken restaurant. Well, Culver's got all that shit, too. I don't even know what Culver's is. Culver's? Culver's? Oh, they they don't have that shit down by you? I don't have that down here. All we have oh, is... Oh, it's, it's a burger place. Butter burgers. Better burgers. Custard. Okay. So they so, will actually yeah. serve the food to you, smile at you, and ask you if you need anything else. Or will somebody come by you and ask you, do you need any honey mustard or ketchup, anything they, like that? They, they got the number and shit. They got to give you the number and shit. And yeah. you go sit down and they'll bring you your food and shit. And then it rings and shit when it's ready. And it's like, yeah. 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 This is Culver's up here. We got a burger, all kinds of burgers. Plus they got chicken sandwiches and fried fish. And okay. But are unbroken. they a national food chain? That's the thing. Well, I, obviously not since you ain't got it. <laughs> I've never heard of them. So, so They're all over this. here. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, but that's the thing about Chick-fil-A. So the fact is that Chick-fil-A do all this other fucked up shit because they have good service. We let a lot of stuff slide. Oh, and their lemonade is awesome. The lemonade is great. I don't know who makes the lemonade, but it's awesome. So, and I like Popeye's too, but here's the thing. You know, how are we supposed to lose all, lose any weight and go on diets with all these chicken sandwiches out there? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, what? you ain't going to diet if you're on fast food. That's true too. It's not gonna happen. You gotta hit yourself in the foot. But yeah. Uh and the thing is the one thing I'm gonna say about this chicken sandwich and be done with it. Y'all do know that this chicken sandwich uh Popeyes has had was like six months ago. This thing has been out. Nobody knew about it, but because of social media viral marketing, that's what made it blow up. 
because oh, they got yeah? some kind of Twitter war with Wendy's or Chick Fil A or somebody else with a shitty chicken sandwich, and that's what made it blow up. And that's where everybody said, "Oh, well, I got to get a chicken sandwich now." So that's how people. That's how businesses are going to start attacking us now. They're going to start attacking us through social media and making it think it's our idea to do it. Okay, cool. And it's yeah, free for I, them. I, I'm a Taco Bell kind of guy. I can't eat Taco Bell. I ate Taco Bell last night. But you know like, what? But you know what? I like Taco John's better. <laughs> okay, we have in Vicksburg. We have a place called Taco Casa. You know, like house. I like that better than Taco Bell. <laughs> Yo, I cute. thought that was cute. Yeah, you know, it's, like house. <laughs> yeah, you know, like Taco Casa, you know. <laughs> but it's really cool. But it, I mean, anyway, it's, it's little, like McDowell's, <laughs> right? <laughs> not the Golden Arcs, the go, not the Golden Arches, the Golden Arcs. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, what other oh, weird shit. news we got before we get to the podcast? Okay, yeah. Hasbro has bought a new uh, company because they're just out there just buying and everything. And the you have to company, tell me about this. Yeah, yeah, so the newest I, company. I didn't, even, I didn't even read the article. I just said, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the company bought, and I might be missing the name, it was called E1 Entertainment. But in E1 Entertainment actually owns a whole bunch of other companies, and one of the companies is Death Row Records. Oh shit. So, yeah, so Hasbro oh. now is the owner of Death Row Records. Oh shit. Yeah, so I guess we're waiting on, you know, the Transformer <laughs> crossover <laughs> with Snoop Dogg <laughs> and Tupac. <laughs> You know. uh, who was that? Gomer asked me about it. He was like, "What, what are we gonna get a crossover? Optimus Prime and Death Row?" I was like, two Optimus Prime, maybe." You know, <laughs> bandana around his head. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Music yeah. videos. So, it, but I know some people were saying like, "Oh, it's just another company that Hasbro is just gonna run into the ground." You know, because they're mad about Transformers. Yeah, Joe. I'm like, uh, Death Row CEO is in jail for murder. And he replaced the other CEO who's also on death row for murder. <laughs> so I don't know how Hasbro can make this worse. Like, it's Hasbro. They'll find a way. I'm like, fucking fanboys. Okay. Whatever. Grimlock Chronic or Chronic Lock or something. I, don't know. I like that. You, okay. Like Marvel <laughs> did. Remember who did that? Marvel? Yeah. When they started having like the hip hop variant covers. Yeah. yeah now Transformers cool. can do that, but they can do it legally. There, there you go. Well, yeah, then they, so yeah. They, that, and that one movie that really the one of them shitty well they're all shitty, but <laughs> the one the one was all, you know, the very stereotypical black transformer. Oh you know, yeah, jazz. Know. They he was always break dancing and yeah. And why why okay why did jazz have to be the first one to die in Transformers? Why the black robot had to die first? Why did, did he die? <laughs> yes, he died. he was the first one. To, I think he was the only one that died in there. He was the one that said. You want a piece of meat, Megatron? Megatron was like, no, I want two. And then just broke him in half. I'm like, oh, you killed a fucking <laughs> black robot. <laughs> I, I vaguely remember that. But yeah. It was, I remember that because I was like, first off, he was fucking stupid anyway because he was Eddie Winslow from Family Matters. That's who voiced him. Oh, was he? Yeah. <laughs> and the I, first thing he came in there, he was breakdancing, was cracking bitches. I'm like, yeah. oh. Fuck. Yeah, I, yeah. We're, we're a place to kick it or whatever. Like, he <laughs> sounded like all those stereotypical video game black characters like from you know jack like from, from, from here's the war here's the war <laughs> that dude. Train, baby yeah 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 i'm like what the fuck man yeah, they it's say like, damn and that is whack <laughs> that is wicked wicked whack i'm like damn sweat <laughs> but honestly i'm not even mad the jazz because was jazz a black robot on the original transformers i mean that i didn't get you know i didn't ever got that feeling that jazz was a black robot but in thundercats Everybody considers Panthro the Black Thundercat. Yeah, yeah. Cause I don't know why Panther. we just do. <laughs> he was a Black Panther. That's true, but <laughs> but he was gray. It wasn't like he was black. Now, I understand if he was black, well, like well, black, black. Well, I, well, gray, black. I guess they, they could just paint him black, then we wouldn't be able to see him, right? I, don't know. I mean, you can like like blackish purple. With, like how how would they how would they animate him? You know, I mean, they you did wouldn't be able to see him at all. Yeah, I see what you're saying. yeah. Because Snake Eyes was black, but he didn't talk. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's true. But at the same time, you could still see Snake Eyes, you know, make moves like that. So you could do Panther like that also. Yeah. But I, I guess they didn't bother. It was like it's a cartoon. It's gray. Because you want to make everybody vibrant, stick out like that. So, you know, make him gray instead of black. Even though his name is Panthro, which is Panther, which means black. But whatever. I mean, he had nunchucks and shit. Yeah, why don't you get a black cat nunchucks? What'd you get? Jim Kelly, Dolomite. 
Yeah, Dolomite did have nunchucks, even though he didn't know how to use them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the thing. So yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with Death Row Records. Death Row Records has been dead for like 20 years. Nobody really cares what Death Row Records is doing. Everybody's gone. De Dr. Dre's gone. Snoop's gone. Tupac is still around. But... <laughs> The only one, yeah, weren't they only making money off like reissues of the Chronic and shit? Pretty much, and every mixtape they drop every other five years with Tupac, he's still releasing new music. Like how? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah. Let me say, can we actually move to the podcast? Oh yeah, yeah. And I will be playing. No, I won't play a Death Row song. Uh, leaving out. Or oh, I might. We'll we'll figure it out. I'm gonna let you pick. I don't know. Oh really? No, nah, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Okay, so let's get into the podcast. Let's talk about the box office numbers, and I guess this kind of died down. But Eli, give it to me. What is the number one movie of the week? What was that flick called? The one with the the something has fallen or whatever. It's another one of those fallen movies. Uh, yeah. Angel has fallen. Angel have, has fallen. Yeah, that's the number one movie. I have no idea how many of these made. Uh, I know I saw the first one. I was like, yeah, it's cool. But they keep making these movies like. What else can you say? What else needs to be said with these movies? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, protecting the black president. Did the last one come out when Obama was still president? I think so. Oh, but was okay. Morgan Freeman president? Because in the first one, he was a president. I think he was like Speaker of the House. But maybe they killed the president. I don't. I never saw the second one. I was like, why they even made this movie? But it's the number one movie. People want to see it. And your boy Leonidas is still making movies. It's like his, his cash cow right now. You know what? We're going to not pay attention to this movie. And we're going to blink and fuck around. It's going to be like eight of these movies. Okay. Like Fast and the Fear is going to be like a whole fucking franchise. Yeah. Yeah, like fucking do all the conjuring and shit. Got like a shared universe and shit. You'll be like, why do they keep making these damn movies? <laughs> you get a sneak up. That's how these franchises are. They just keep cranking the same movies out. Uh, next movie is Good Boys. Uh, number three is Overcomer. I don't know what that is. Uh, number four know. is The Lion King. Still hanging in there. Uh, I'm I'm thinking I'm hearing that it's the highest grossing animated movie of all time. Oh yeah, I think so. I, my numbers may be off, but fuck it, who cares? Um, number five, Fast and the Furious presents Sean Hobbs. Let me see something. Sean Hobbs was released in China. It was finally released in China. So yeah. as of right now, box office wise, it is five hundred eighty-eight million. So it's already crossed uh, already crossed half a billion. So do they like the Rock in China? Well, they love the Rock in China. Okay. Yeah, him and Vin Diesel, they they loved them over there. So they they was they were waiting on. They were like everybody was saying that the the numbers are low. They were like, wait for China, wait for China. There you go. So it'll probably be six hundred million before two days from now. Oh, um, what else we got? Number six, Ready or Not. I don't know what that is. Uh, number seven, The Angry Birds movie two. Uh, number eight, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Uh, number nine, Dora and the Lost City of Gold. And number 10, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Let me guess, Eli, you saw it again. I did see it again. You are single-handedly keeping the movie industry afloat. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was still packed, man. It was all, I saw it for my birthday again. Because the oh, kitchen. Yeah. You... I, went, I went to see the kitchen, but I wanted to see the kitchen, but they, it wasn't out no more. So oh, I was like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. So the kitchen was gone? Yeah, it wasn't at my theater no more. And I was like, damn it. I'm, I'm not shocked. <laughs> I mean, when I went, it was just a bunch of the old ladies in the, in the movie theater anyway. Oh, well, but I read the book, though. I read the kitchen book. I know we usually book, save is... the, the comic reviews for now, but I'm, I'm curious. I can't wait. I get to hear what you got to think, what you think about the, the kitchen comic review. Not movie review, but comic review. Well, the book was cool. I that, That's what I thought. That's what I thought the book yeah. was cool. Yeah, just old school gangster shit with, with uh, you know, women took over. And, they, yeah, they, they were grimy. These bitches were grimy as fuck. Yeah. I, so, so yeah, I mean, if the movie, like you said, yeah, if they made that a movie, that would be cool. But it sounds like they didn't make the comic a movie. <laughs> they did. Like I said, that would have been something different. It would have been yeah. like, okay, wow, this is, this is, I don't know. Maybe yeah. they can redo it and make it like a TV show or something like that. I don't know. Because a movie like that, you don't need a big budget. Nah, just the sets. I mean, it was set in the 70s and, you know, but, um. No, it was cool. I I, I really enjoyed it. You know, it was just straight up mob mobsters in the seventies and shit. Yeah, I, I was kind of let down, but okay. Oh, uh, yeah, we're gonna do that. Um, okay. So we talked about the movie. Did any other movie that you see saw before we? Moved uh, on? yeah. Last night I saw the Peanut Butter Falcon. I heard about that one. That's that uh Shia LaBeouf. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he uh, befriends this uh, dude with Down syndrome who mm-hmm. escapes from his uh, the, his home that he was at. He escapes and goes on the run because he's trying to go to a wrestling school to learn wrestling from his favorite pro wrestler. And then he finds Shia LaBeouf's character who's also on – he's on the lamp because he, he's like uh, – he did some crime, you know. So he's mm-hmm. kind of like laying low and shit from the law. So they kind of befriend each other and they're traveling. It's kind of like a – you know, like a Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer kind of story. They're just, you know, getting in their misadventures. They're on the raft. It's down in, was it North Carolina somewhere? Um, okay. You know, down south somewhere. And, uh, and, and yeah, it's just their misadventures. And it was really funny. It was, um, you know, I relate to, related to it a lot. I, I, I have a daughter with Down syndrome, so I was able to relate to a lot of scenes. Choked up a couple of times. Okay. And it was I just mean, really... Were there any scenes that kind of reminded you, you know, of anything? Well... Well, it's um, it just really, you know, as a parent, you know, I really related to the scenes. That it, it really goes into the lack of care and resources for people with special needs. And um, that was really, they really touched on that a lot because he hates the homies and he loses his family and no one, you know, that, they, they, they were his primary caregivers. And so he's forced to lo- go to the state run home. And he hates it, so he escapes. And um, yeah, and, and it just and uh, just that dynamic of letting letting and I catch myself doing that with my kid, like letting them be who they are, letting them do, you know, not giving them credit for their abilities. That's the stuff they can do. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> we try to overprotect them and stuff. So there was a lot. It touched on a lot of that. So like I said, as a parent with the child with special needs i i found it very uh heartwarming and it's cool to see that representation you know the, the you know the, it was an actual actor w- with down syndrome who stars in the movie and from what i understand he met the directors mm-hmm. and said hey i want to make i want to be in movies and the director's like oh yeah well what do you want this movie to be about and he, he just says well i want to I'm into wrestling and blah, blah. So they basically let this dude pitch this movie to him, and they made the movie off of his idea. <laughs> so, that's, actually, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I heard about it a while ago because, you know, because I do have a child with special needs, and I, I get notices. So I heard about this movie a while ago, and uh, but they were making it, and it's been premiering all over the country and, you know, uh, you know doing premieres and um, – you know, people with disabilities are being invited to see it and all that stuff. So it's really showing, you know, uh, the diversity. You know, when we talk about diversity, this, this the people with with uh, special needs, they're another uh, invisible demographic <laughs> that is underrepresented in the media, movies, all that stuff. So, so yeah, it was a good movie. You know, yeah, Peter I saw Butterfield. a review, a review about it. And you say how much? Four to five. I give it a five out of five. I enjoyed oh, five it a lot. Okay, cool. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It was funny. It's heartwarming. Um, uh, uh, Jake the Snake has a cameo. Mick Foley has a cameo. <laughs> so, oh, really? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a good flick. It's good. It's funny. Um, yeah, he he wants to be a wrestler. He wants to. He loves pro wrestling. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, since you, I'm, I hate to interrupt you, but I actually met Ted DiBiase like a couple of days ago. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, he's from Mississippi. So did you meet him? No, or I, did I you met, just met him. Met him. him. Shook his okay. hand. Talked oh, to him. No yes, okay, it cool. wasn't. No, I, I was fifty feet away from him. And you no, know. he wasn't. No, Neil Adams. <laughs> no, it wasn't Neil Adams. No, I actually walked to Ted DiBiase and had a conversation with him. <laughs> oh no, shit! How is he cool? He was pretty cool. He actually had like a, a WWE like a sweatshirt, sweatpants, and stuff like that on him. Shook his hand. Uh, actually, his son is the same age as I am. And he went to, like, my rival high school. He played soccer. He was, like, a big soccer one. Not Teddy B.I.C. Jr., but it was another one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, pretty cool. He, he Yeah. I, Teddy B.I.C., the folks, when he walked in there, like, some of the younger folks that worked there, like, had no idea who he was. So, I had to Google him on my phone, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, well, cool, man. There you go. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe come in, man. I'll try for the be the next Virgil. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, can we get into the shit now? Let's do it. All right. Let's get into the shit. Uh, like I said, we have 
this has been a big thing going on right now with this war going on between Disney and Sony over who is going to what's going to happen with Spider-Man, what's going to happen to the next movie. People are pissed at everybody, Eli. People don't know what to point the finger at, who to blame. You know, yeah. when the first thing, when it first dropped off, you know, everybody's pointing the finger at Sony. Oh, what did Sony do? What did you do? You know, because they're always the people that's fucking up. So you, of course, you're going to look at them. You know, then some more news came out and it had Disney looking in a different light. And it was kind of weird. So before I get into that, we actually did a poll on our fan page. Yes, because we have fans. No, we don't <laughs> have fans. People just always tweet us about how much we suck. <laughs> <laughs> I should be fired. That's about it. But anyway, people did answer the poll. And I'm going to actually answer who was at fault and i'm trying to think on the poll i don't have the numbers i just guess uh disney actually won people actually sided more with disney in the dispute uh i think it was like 181 disney side i think it was like 150 something sony side so people sided with disney over sony of course now suckers exactly because you know <laughs> it's, it's disney you can't go against Disney. disney could do no wrong you know, yeah, they were bot. They were bots. Those the last thirty people were bots. <laughs> <laughs> we we got spammed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, oh uh, yeah. So, I like I said, there's a deadline article that came out. Anything else that has came out, people are reviewing about. Oh, they're still in talks, and they're gonna make Spider Man Amazing Friends with Spider, uh, with Firestar and Iceman. No, they're not. That's bullshit. Stop reading every fucking thing you know. The only thing that's real that came out was deadline. When Deadline came out and actually spelled out everything that happened. Now, Eli, I read over this, and I'm going to be biased on this. I'm going to give my opinion on what I, what I thought. Disney fucked this deal up. Yeah. That's just I, yeah. plain as day what happened. Everybody wants to blame Sony. Disney fucked this deal up. And I go into uh, detail about what happened. Because it was, re and the more I read about it, even more fucked up right it was. Now, the way the deal is. Sony and Disney made a deal. Basically, how the deal was, they made a five movie contract. That's all. I don't know. Everybody is so, so shocked and surprised why this stuff is going on right now. That was the deal. They made a five movie contract, and the movies have been fulfilled already. Spider Man yeah. Far From Home was the last movie on their contract that they, they had. Didn't, they didn't realize that Infinity War and Endgame and Civil War counted. Yeah, those all movies. those movies counted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's that was. Two, there's only two Spider Man movies. You fucking idiots. <laughs> right. And even when Kevin Feige made this deal, even back then, he said this deal isn't going to last forever. And when it's done, this deal probably will never happen again by any other company. You know, like you sharing the rights to this because it's just too complicated. Because basically, how they originally signed the deal, uh, there was going to be a five movie deal with Spider Man. Um. He was going to be in three Marvel movies, and he was going to be in two solo movies. The two solo movies, Sony was going to put up 100% of the financial, the finance. So it was going to come out of Sony's pocket. Disney was going to be the one. Kevin Feige was going to head it, and he was going to produce. They was going to use Marvel Studios to produce it, but Sony was going to foot the bill. Now, whatever profits came from those two movies, the solo movies, uh, Disney got 5% of like the first week's gross. But that's five. That's five percent. You know, all profit. They didn't put up any money for it. There's no risk on that movie. So even if the movie flop, it's no risk on Sony, on on Disney's part. That was mm -hmm. Sony that would hurt. Yeah. You know, so it was all risk on the part. So people saying the five percent was nothing. It's all it's all profit. It's no risk. All they got to do is just actually show up, do all the work. Sony pays the money, and it's done. So that was the deal. Now, to be fair. It did feel like Disney kind of got the short end of the stick. It did, but it seemed like they had to because Spider Man belongs to Sony. That's what people understand. Sony is never, ever, ever going to give up Spider Man. They're not going to do it mm -hmm. because he grosses too much money for them. Hell, Sony. I mean, Spider Man and PlayStation pretty much pays keeps the lights on for Sony. That's pretty much it. You know, that's all people know about them. So Spider Man's not going anywhere. So yes, Disney had to bend over backwards to get Sony to play ball. So it kind of, you know, was in Sony's favor to get them to play ball with it. Now they knew at the end of the five contract deal, they knew it was gonna be uh, you know, Disney was gonna ask for more money. Sony was fine with that. Sony was prepared to, you know, okay, we know five percent was a little bit low. We know you're gonna ask for a little bit more. That's cool. Let's work something out. Disney came out with this bullshit deal saying they want half. Yeah. Like, how you gonna go from five percent to half? You know, and people were like, "Well, 
Yeah, but that's different because Sony, uh, Disney said that they were going to put up half the money. But that also means Sony gets Disney gets half control yeah. over Spider Man. That means they get you know more influence on what Spider Man can and cannot do. And here's the thing: at first, it was just on the Holland movies what they were getting five percent on. This new deal, Disney was going to get fifty percent over all Spider Man related movies. Venom yeah. Two, Spider Verse, Aunt May solo movie, Morbius <laughs> don't matter. They were going to get half of all that shit. And they wanted Venom. I so, would go see an Aunt May. So. <laughs> <laughs> if it's Marissa Tomei. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I probably you know, just, would. Just dating, like, you know, all the fucking, all these different, you know, Marvel characters. Well, they can't use Marvel. <laughs> Not anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, so, so that was the deal. Hey, don't, don't Sony, Sony own Valiant? <laughs> Do they? I don't think so. I who, who, who where, where, no, some some unknown company we never heard of on them, but Sony is producing that blood strike, blood sport. Oh, blood, blood moon, shot, blood, blood shot. shot. Yeah, that guy, Vin Diesel. Yeah, so Sony is producing that movie. I don't think they yeah. own Valiant, but they are producing that movie. So yeah, that's they, what I meant. Like they're gonna do a Valiant verse. Yeah, I think they're doing all the movies. So I think they like license them out. So there you go, Spider Man versus Bloodshot. Aw shit! If they were smart, they would do that. but this is sony so (laughs) so that's the thing so basically disney seemed like they were trying to basically kind of low-key buy back spider-man from them take control of spider-man from them they're like no 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 no. we see what the fuck you're trying to do you're trying to get spider-man to take full control of him no we're not gonna do that and then you're gonna take half of all of our money now people saying well it's still you still get 50 percent that doesn't make any sense so let's say the next Spider-Man movie makes a billion dollars. That means Sony only makes five hundred million from them. No live-action Spider-Man movie has ever grossed less than seven hundred. So that'd be a dumb deal to make. Even if you do make less money making it on your own, you still keep that money all to yourself. Yeah. Hell, Venom did eight hundred. Yeah. So why the hell would they split half the profit with, with Marvel? Just for two hundred dollars more, I mean two hundred million dollars more. That didn't make any sense. That is a that is a dumb deal. That's damn near extortion. Yeah, yeah and I don't I don't feel bad for Disney at all, actually. Right, and especially <laughs> since Disney own look the top five movies. I think top six movies this year that all hit a billion dollars. Five of them are Disney. Well, it's like every week we like how many Disney movies are on the top ten. We do this shit every week. Right, it's always a Disney you know? movie. So yeah. So out of the six movies that hit a billion this year, five of them are Disney, and the other one is Spider-Man Homecoming. I mean, Spider-Man yeah. Far From Home. <laughs> Disney's going to be all right. Disney's going to be all right. And on top of that, they own 100% of the merchandising of Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because so, Sony sold that shit back to them. So they own the rights to uh, Spider-Man merchandising. They own the comic book rights to Spider-Man. All Sony has is the movie rights, and they won't have that shit? Yeah. No, man. That's not how that works. Disney even said, look, 50 is too much. Back it down to 30, we got a deal. Disney said, fuck you. We won't have. <laughs> so yeah. that's when Sony was like, nah, this shit ain't gonna work. They up and left and that's it. So Yeah. Stupid shit. So people think thinking that, well, maybe they'll still work out a deal. No, the deal is dead. Because at D23, D- and that's the thing, because Disney was trying to get the deal done before D23. That's why all this news came out. And so what happened, the deal didn't get done, D23 hit, and both Tom Holland and Kevin Feige had exit interviews both saying the deal is dead. It's done. There's not another MC, uh, Spider-Man is out of the MCU. So you can complain and whine and all stuff like that. Eh, it's done. That's it. Mm-hmm. Life moves on. So I know people are going to miss Spider-Man being the MCU. Some people don't give a shit. Some people are glad he's gone. Like, I'm glad Iron Boy is out of the MCU. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm I, on the fence. Like, yeah, did I like him in the MCU? Yeah, he was fun. I liked those movies. It was fun. But, you know, it's not like Spider-Man can't exist on his own. Hell, he you has know? existed on his own. I mean, yeah. people acting like he's associated with the Avengers. Yeah. He wasn't really associated with the Avengers like 2002. Yeah, and it's like, uh, you know, and to say that Sony can't make a good Spider-Man movie is bullshit because right. they made it into the Spider-Verse. Which, which is better than any MCU Spider-Man yeah, movie. It won an Oscar. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, they never say, oh, that was lightning in a bottle. That was only one time. Like, no, I like I, I, I like Spider Man too. Mm-hmm. I like I like Fat Doc Ock, you know. <laughs> right, <laughs> Mandy's, you know. <laughs> yeah, I like I, I like that one. You know, I I still like the t- the first two Raimi movies. I still yeah, I still think those two. are the two best ones. Yeah, I, I still enjoy them. You know, I mean, shit. I mean, Spider Man's a strong enough to character to 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 live on his own. I'm I feel bad for Marvel because exactly. I'm glad I, you said that. Yeah, I there's really nothing on that San Diego Comic Con, even D23. There's really nothing that they announced that I'm like, oh shit! I mean, I'll check some shit but out. But Cat Denning is in Wandavision. <laughs> That's <laughs> Wandavision's like the only show that I'm really interested in. I told that you, I'm, I told yeah. you, y'all shit yeah. on me for saying Wandavision looked like it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that's the one. Well, because Vision's an interesting character. He's always been an interesting character. I don't give a shit about Falcon and. The snowman it's or whatever just, his name is. It's just another Captain America fight terrorist. We've seen this shit. Yeah, I don't, and I don't give a shit about that. I don't care about uh, Hawkeye or whatever the hell they're making. It's fucking Loki. I don't give a shit about a Loki show. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I don't care. You know, so half the most of that shit they announced. What else they announced? Okay. Ms. Marvel? Eh, I'll check it out. You know, I but guess. it's probably not for me. Moon Knight? We'll see. I never gave a shit about Moon Knight. Why, why do y'all like Moon Knight so much? Maybe not you, Eli, but <laughs> well, everybody else. I, I haven't read read it, but everyone says the Jeff Lemire run is like the bee's knees. That's they always say Jeff Lemire's run is always the best. Whatever Jeff Lemire runs, he's the best. Ooh, Century, Jeff Lemire, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Moon Knight at the end of the day is still Moon Knight. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, I always just thought Moon Knight's a, 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 the jalopy Batman. That's, That's like, basically what he is. <laughs> That's what I thought he was. <laughs> you know, oh, you haven't read the Jeff Lemire run, have you? I'm like, no. See, you don't know what you're talking about. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> he's still sucking every other run, so shit, what the fuck? Yeah, he's like, he's Bruce Wayne. He, he's a cab driver. He's a rich guy. He's taking Egyptian shit from the Egypt and shit as out. Yeah. <laughs> I guess whatever. I said, I said this is, ah, people I just like him because they think he's the closest thing that Batman Marvel yeah. has. That's the only reason people like him. Yeah, like fuck, it, I'm gonna read the Punisher. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> shit, just shoot people. Batman shoots people. No. Yeah. So now, honestly, Eli, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I am interested in She-Hulk. Yeah, we'll see. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. I'm wondering, are they gonna fucking CGI her though, or are they just gonna get some big ass chick to paint her green? That's some okay. Now you got me a little worried right now. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm curious to see where they're gonna go with this. Yeah, but reason because I'm curious if they got, because, yeah. If they got a CG higher, that's gonna be expensive as fuck. But it's Disney; yeah. they can afford it. I suppose, but still, it's a TV show. I mean, I just wonder how minimal. Now you know we've seen some cool CGI characters, you know, King Shark and shit like that on the CW shows and mm-hmm. shit like that. But we gotta see her in every fucking. We gotta see the She Hulk, She Hulk out right. in every fucking episode, you know. Damn it! And if that ain't happening, <laughs> you know, with CGI, I, I, you know what I mean? That CGI better be good. And, right. And then, yeah, they are Disney, but that's that's what concerns me. It's like, or are they just gonna get a chick painted green, a big giant? You know, who can play? Who can play her? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. even though we were joking at the beginning of the podcast, there are, you know, Facebook comments about, oh, it's SJW Hulk. <laughs> Why are they making a woman Hulk? Why can't you do the man Hulk? I'm like, oh, you, you dumbasses. <laughs> yeah. Like, but at least they're consistent dumbasses. Yeah. So cause even though she's been around since the 80s, technically she's Stan Lee's last Marvel character creation. I'm not going to count Ravage 2099. So I'm going to say that. So that's why she's special. You know, she's interested. Oh, she, his last? What do you mean? His last one? Yeah, like what? the last character he created. Yeah, that was She-Hulk. Oh, really? Yeah. That was like, when, when did that come? Like 70s, 80s? In the 80s, yeah. Really? That was, He never wrote anything after that? I mean, he may have wrote something after that, but as far as like a Marvel character, that like was the created last... a character. He yeah. Creating... Now there was one called Ravage two thousand ninety nine, but I'm not gonna count him. That was that other guy because that's too weird for Stan Lee. You know, this one She Hulk that was him, his his creation. That was all him. Okay. Yeah. And so well, that... it sounds like it, the cousin of Bruce Banner and all that. Shit. Yeah, Bruce Banner, Jennifer Walters, name her. Oh, uh, she's an interesting character because she likes being Hulk. Oh, I hope they go with the classic '80s, you know, uh, male gaze, cheesecake bombshell, 
you know. <laughs> you know they ain't. <laughs> that's what I want. I don't want this new woke She-Hulk. I don't want that. Unless when Namor, when they fought Namor in that Avengers book, and Namor saw She-Hulk was like, oh, She-Hulk smash. He was like, what the fuck did y'all do to the pretty Hulk? <laughs> That was my same reaction that Damore had. So, yeah, give me old 80s pinup, she hope, because that's what she was famous for, not whatever the fuck we got going on now. Broid it out. Yeah, now here's a question. Is it more woke to have, like, a frumpy-looking she hulk with short hair and, and mom jeans and shit, you know, sweater, big-ass sweater, or a hot-ass she hulk so lesbians can check her out too. Well, see, that's the thing because it's so <laughs> weird. We had this conversation about feminism before, also. So people were considering She-Hulk in the '80s because that's what that idea of feminism was—like you owning your sexuality and you can do this stuff—and that's that's feminism then. But now you got feminism where oh, I can be big and butch and buck like a man, you know, and I can whoop ass, and they think that's feminism. So it's like there's so many schools of feminism, we don't know where to go. You know, but at the same time, let's be honest. Most of the time, we were buying She Hulk books because she was fighting and she was always end up in a brown panties or her towel or she was <laughs> naked. And it was like, why is she naked fighting the frightful four or the Mandarin? Who cares? <laughs> Just keep reading. Yeah. You know, her boobs were blacked out by the car she was picking up and shit, you know. <laughs> but I don't know. Fun character. I don't know where they're going to go with She-Hulk. Hopefully they do the John Byrne run. Because she was doing the fourth wall break before Deadpool was doing it. Like, at least you think she'll, team up, she'll team up with Matt Murdock and they'll do it in courtroom investigations and shit? They got to do that. I mean, that's like the whole point of doing that. They, well, she's a lawyer, ain't she? Like, she's a she lawyer, yeah. yeah. They've done it in the comics. I think they did like in Civil War or something. Oh, no. Civil War Two When Hawkeye shot uh, Banner. I didn't read that shit. Oh, you didn't read that shit. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, dear no, like Mur Murdoch was on one side representing him and She Hulk was trying to convict him and I think just... I wait, wait a second. I think I did read that I did read that it was the death of the Hulk, right? Right, right. When the Hulk I got did shot read in the that face I read that issue, yes, and it was a fucking court I that's right, yeah. I did read that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was shit. So <laughs> So that's my thing. So that's the only one I'm slightly have my eyebrow on. But like I said, trust but verify. I don't know where they're gonna go with this, but it's Disney because they they moved Kevin Feige to the TV shit. They want him to concentrate on this more than the movie shit. Okay, well that's we'll why see. we got Eternals and whatever the fuck else out there because they want this movie. They want this TV shit to go to that. They're going after Netflix. They're trying to kill Netflix. Yeah, well that's the thing is like. Like, none of their movies, like, excite me. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean I'll mean, i check them. I'm not saying I'm not going to check them. There is one. Like, there is me. one they announced that did excite me. Well, yeah, Black Panther 2, but that ain't coming out for, what, three, four years or some shit? True, you know? true. <laughs> I know you, know you don't give a shit, Eli, but let me, let me talk about what I got to say about Black Panther for a second. Uh, now, here's, here's my thing about Black Panther. Uh, this is something that has to happen in the sequel. Not what I want, not what I hope to happen. This has to happen. This is non-negotiable has to happen. The next movie has to move the needle of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It has to be more like the overall arc of whatever saga they're doing. It has to be the focal point of the Marvel Universe. Because the first movie, like I said, I love the first movie. But the first movie felt like it was in its own bubble. Like if you're watching all 22, 23 Marvel movies, you can skip Black Panther and you'll be fine. You know, because there's nothing That's in that so movie dumb. that that moved the universe or moved the story. Like, for instance, like you, if you saw Age of Ultron and you went right to Infinity War, you're gonna be fucked up. If you didn't see Captain America: Civil War, you're gonna be fucked up. Like, wait, what, what happened? You know, mm -hmm. but you can't do that with Black Panther. So Black Panther Two has to be that movie where, if you want to know where the the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going, it has to move it forward. It has to be, oh, you got to see this movie because such and such 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 happened, and you know, whatever. He's gonna fight Namor. That, that's what everybody's saying. The internet is already saying uh, he's gonna fight Namor. We don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen. All but we know is that would, Ryan would Namor is... introduce mutants though? I think they can introduce mutants in Eternals. Oh really? You think so? I think so. Like I said, completely my guess. That's what I'm going. Oh, I am excited they introduced Black Knight in there. Okay. The Black Knight is like one of my favorite Avengers. Uh, when I was reading that shit, he, he's basically a Jedi. You know, that's basically mm -hmm. what he is. Uh, he's not an internal, so I don't know what the fuck he's doing in there. But they got your boy, your boy playing him. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, Jon Snow. Oh, 
Oh, really? He's playing him? Yeah. Like I said, I don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't know, but he looks Black Knight-ish. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, really know the Eternals. I, like I said, I'm not a cosmic Marvel guy. Oh, that's the thing. Like, Black Knight has nothing to do with the Eternals. That's the fuck. That's the weird shit about it. Okay, Like, yeah, why is he even I there? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know either, but he, he's there. So I'm more excited about him, the Eternals, because the Eternals just some old weird shit. I don't care. But what, what movies are coming out? Eternals and what else? Oh. Um, Black Widow, right? Black Widow. Oh, uh, they got a post of Black Widow. Oh, and your boy Shang-Chi. Okay, I got something to say about Shang-Chi. Oh, yeah, Shang-Chi, yeah. Yeah, here's the thing. Okay, so the guy that plays Shang Chi, I yeah. decided to look him up and see exactly where he came from. Like, what is his, you know, what has he done, you know? And apparently, he has a show on Netflix, and I watched it this weekend. Oh yeah, which one? The the show that he was on, like whoever the guy playing Shang Chi. So the name of the show is Kim's Kim's Convenience, oh, and I'm thinking like, okay, this guy's got a martial art background. I'm, I'm waiting for him to throw a punch and kick like that. Eli, it's a fucking family sitcom. Oh really? <laughs> Yeah, it's a Korea, it's a family sitcom about a Korean store owner, and he's just the uh, remember on Family Ties, Michael J. Fox, whatever, like Alex P. Keaton. Okay, yeah. That's he's, he's the Korean Alex P. Keaton. Oh no shit. Yeah, so I'm sitting here watching this, you know, family sitcom. Okay, when's he gonna throw a punch? When's he gonna kick? You know. That's yeah. racist. No. I, it is racist. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Korean show where nobody throws a punch. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll give you a pass because like this is the Shang, this is Shang Chi. What the yeah. Fuck? Like okay, so but obviously he has to do something to be Shang Chi. Maybe he was like in like an underground version of the Raid or some shit. Like maybe he's like Tony Ja, you know, beating the shit out of people nobody's ever heard of. Him. No, this is the only fucking thing he did. A Korean Canadian family sitcom. Hmm. And he tweeted Marvel, hey, can I be Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi was like, uh, and Marvel like, yeah, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that easy? I get it. Well, you know, well, the thing about China, they'll take, they'll take like pop stars. Yeah. Like singers and shit. And they'll just put them in kung fu movies. And they can. I mean, shouldn't they it. know kung fu? Some of them don't really. I mean, a lot, <laughs> a lot of like those stars in, in, um, a lot of those '90s kung fu flicks were like pop stars. They just look pretty, and they just threw them in there. I mean, look what the Ma- like that's how the Matrix is made. Like Neo and Trinity and those motherfuckers didn't know kung fu. That's true. They- and I know we like in the Marvel universe now, like Chris Evans don't know kung fu and Scarlett yeah. Johansson don't know kung fu. But yeah. this is the master of kung fu. Yeah. So he's supposed nope. to be better than T'Challa and Steve Rogers and whatever, Bucky and all this shit like that. We're supposed to see some shit we've never seen before because he's the master of Kung Fu. Yeah. Kicking uh, Iron Fist ass. Right. Yeah, but <laughs> we're getting a guy from a, a convenience store sitcom. Now, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something about this. The show, Kim Convenience, is actually pretty funny. So if you want to see a good comedy family sitcom, I recommend Kim Convenience. The weirdest thing about Kim Convenience was not that it, the Korean part of it. It was the Canadian part of it. That was weird. Oh, yeah? Because, <laughs> you know, they was in a convenience store. You know, you trade the money. They got the lit funny money and shit like that. Like, I, oh, I got a toonie. Like, what the fuck is a toonie? Yeah, like, they got $2 bills. They're pretty common up there. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know? <laughs> so, like, you're speaking a different language. Oh, yeah, that's, and uh, they kept saying, they never said miles. They kept saying kilometers. Like, I don't know what the fuck a kilometer is. Yeah, kilometers, yeah. Well, we're, well America is the stupid country that that doesn't use the metric. It made me feel stupid. I'm like, <laughs> talk normal. <laughs> kilometers and kilograms and shit. Cause yeah. <laughs> it's just easier. Like, none of our shit is equal, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that's the shit that confused me. The Korean part, I was cool with that. It's the Canadian part that fucked me up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what I've been watching on Netflix? Is uh, that Woo Assassins. Is that on Netflix? I heard about it. Is that, is that good? It's all right. It's the fight scenes and violence. It's really brutal and shit. And there's F. It's rated R violence and shit. They're dropping F bombs and but it's like super like cheesy. It's like a comic book. Like it should. It's like basically what Iron Fist should have been. It sounds like that guy should have been Shang Chi. Whoever that guy is playing. Yeah. Well, uh, what's his name? Emu Uwe or whatever. The guy. He's the guy. The guy from the raid. You know, oh, his cool. first okay. like we, he's speaking English and shit, but uh, and it's got the chick from Vikings, that hot uh, Lagertha from Vikings is in it. She kicks ass too. She's like a kickboxing champion too. And shit. But they're throwing like fireballs, and he's got these superpowers and shit. 
That was like Dragon you know, Ball Z and shit. Yeah, he's doing all that. Yeah, he's going Super Saiyan and throwing. He's doing the Harukens and she's like Ryu and shit. Oh, I gotta watch this shit. Yeah, it's 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 fun, but it's it's a series though. Like I'm on like, like episode four. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, I thought it was gonna be a movie. I'm like, damn, another series. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Get to devote your time to it. Yeah. So, now here's the thing. Now, like I said, I talked about King of Venus and the guy playing Shang Chi. Now you know I've been champion for another guy to play Shang Chi. That that yellow black ranger. Which one? Oh, the, the the Power Ranger guy. I'm so yeah, the Power Ranger. I'm so confused because they they changed the races, so I don't know. <laughs> but the Asian one, <laughs> whichever color he was, I wanted him to be Shang Chi. And guess who he's playing? Uh, Liu Shang- Kang. Oh, that's right. You, did, you told me this already. Yeah, I, I probably texted to you something like that. So he's yeah. playing Liu Kang for the combat. And guess what? Mm. Mortal Kombat is going to be rated R, and it comes out a month either before or after Shang-Chi. Okay. So that's going to fuck Marvel up. So the one thing Marvel's supposed to have, they're going to outdo Marvel in there. Yeah. And that's my thing, but why I don't mind Sony still holding on to Spider-Man shit because I mean, Sony's gonna be fine. S- Sony can do shit that Disney ain't gonna do. Right. If they want to do an already Venom movie or Carnage movie, they could. They not. Yeah. But they could. Yeah. yeah. You know. So that's the thing about them. And honestly, Sony really need to just milk the, milk the shit out of uh, Spider-Man as much as they can. Throw them in a Men in Black movie or something. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Do it. Oh, and I'm trying to think. Was anything else happened on D23? I think that was it. That was a bunch of oh, Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to get to it. I was going to get to it. I know you're going to get on me. <laughs> it soon as you see the light bulb pop. <laughs> now, like I said, this is your thing. It's not your thing. It's our thing. But it's your thing. So I'm going to let you, <laughs> let you take it. I thought it. we're not allowed to talk about it, though. <laughs> we're pulling out. Every now and then, we're allowed to talk about one topic, you know, <laughs> For a short period of time, so yeah, we're we're bringing Star Wars out of the Will Smith box, and we'll talk about it for right now. All right, you want me to say shit? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh, okay. Well, the two biggest announcements was there. They did drop the Mandalorian, the full Mandalorian trailer. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, they showed something. They showed a clip, like a whole scene, on um. Well, maybe it was leaked. During San Diego Comic Con, they showed like a whole leak scene from the first episode, which was really cool, featuring Werner Herzog and all that shit. This whole scene where he beats up fucking stormtroopers and shit like that, you know. Uh, so that, but this is like the actual trailer, and damn, it looks cool. Fucking stormtroopers, you got IG88 mm-hmm. fucking twirling around, shooting shit. You got the it just looks cool, like gangster shit in the Star Wars universe. Let, um, let, let me talk about The Mandalorian for a second. Cause like I said, I wasn't like super excited about it. But when I saw that trailer, like if you didn't tell me this was a TV show, I would have straight up said, okay, this is the next movie they got working. They got coming out. Yeah. Disney put some money behind this shit. Yeah, I think that's why they built Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's insane. Like this shit looks like really good. Like, you know, when you watch the CW you know, when they got the new trailers coming out, you know, okay, that's a TV show. You know, yeah. this shit looked like a fucking movie. Yeah. And so it's just with yeah. the shots they have in there and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, they got some money behind it. But I'm going to let you take back over. Okay. I just yeah, want to add The Stormtrooper that. helmets on, yeah, the Stormtrooper helmets on, on spikes and shit. Yeah. And the carbonized people they were yeah. capturing and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody in carbonite. They got, you got Carl Weathers doing some shit. You got Action Jim Jackson. Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking, uh, what was his name? What's his name in Predator again? Bennett? I don't name Predator. I know it's no, probably not Bennett. No, not Ben. What's his name in uh, not Fuck? Bennett. Dylan? Yeah, not was it Dylan? Dylan? Dylan, you son, you of, son a of a bitch. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's in it. And of course, Gina Carano, she has a big ass gun too. So I don't know. I watched it a few times. I'm like, oh, I can't. Ah. That, that's, they, they sold me. Like, they sold me on that. I, I want to watch that. He, here's that's, what I hope. I hope. Is it Boba Fett or just some other Mandalorian? It's just some Mandalorian. Man. I hope whoever it is, they never speak. Oh, they do. Ah, oh, shit. They do. They, you he's killed in that a mystique. <laughs> they, but he's got, like, the cool voice, you know. Okay, I, okay, let's do this. Never, don't give him a name. Yeah, maybe not. He don't could give be just, just like... He's just the Mandalorian. He don't could give just him be a like name. Bl- Blondie and uh, uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. 
Yeah. yeah. Or like, you know, the man with no name. Like uh what's it? Or uh Desperado, the the El Mariachi. Yeah. He yeah. never had a name in those movies. He was just El Mariachi. Yeah. The guitar player. So <laughs> See, yes, yeah. so do the Mandalorian the same way. Don't give him a name. Keep him mysterious. He just shows up and everybody's like, oh shit. Make up wild stories about the Mandalorian, you know. And I'm I'm there. Just give me a space western, you know. Pretty much. It looks, yeah, it just looks dope. And I was like, cool, man. I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's when I saw, I was sold when they, I saw the shit during San Diego. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, you know, when they dropped this trailer, I'm like, yeah, you ain't got to show me shit. I was already there, but hell yeah. I still want to see. <laughs> yeah, that sold me. And, and it comes out in November. We didn't talk about that. Disney Plus drops in November. Yeah, that's just a few months. Yeah, just a few months. So yeah, we, we got it. I'm, I'm, I'm watching that shit. Yeah, Christmas is coming early. Bye bye, Netflix. <laughs> bye bye Kim's convenience <laughs> oh wait, you gotta talk about the other thing oh yeah 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 I can't uh, believe you're gonna forget that <laughs> well it's it's confirmed there was rumors for years then more rumors a couple weeks ago speculation mm -hmm. now it's official Obi-Wan the TV or Kenobi the series mm -hmm. Kenobi the series so, and, and then of course I mean the thing was that it was actually going to be a movie at first yeah but you and you and McGregor was gonna come back, and, and well, he is coming back now. Mm -hmm. It's official. He's he, he's reprising his role as an, yeah. uh, basically, I I would think an older Obi Wan, where he's I guess there, there's not many details of when it's gonna be taking place, but mm -hmm. people are pretty much speculating that it is gonna be between, you know, the Clone Wars or Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Yeah, so, I mean, it's got to be around the time he'll be on Tatooine, just stashed away yeah. something like that. So. So I, I mean I'm interested in it. Everyone's saying, oh, they gotta have Darth Maul and blah blah. blah. Like, they don't need to have a Darth. They don't Maul. need to have Darth Maul in there. No, we already know what happens with that, all that shit. So I mean, what's he gonna do? They're gonna fight and not kill each other, you know? And, right, and then just I'll get you next time. Like yeah. no, just, just Vader. Just, Vader's gotta show up. I'm like, why? Just have a new baddie <laughs> show up. Just have a new yeah. baddie and he's just fighting yeah. this. That's it, you know? Yeah, just do some. Yeah, he can be just an outlaw, like you know. Fighting it, fucking fuck fighting the sand people and shit. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, have like a super sand person or something. Well, yeah, sand. fighting rancors and you know. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of folks he could fight. I mean, he can go against the huts or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a, but we could have had a Obi Wan movie, but since the boycott of Solo was so successful, it yeah. made the Star Wars Disney franchise completely rewrite everything they were doing. You're like, you know what? Let's just keep the TV show. So, good job, fanboys. You did it. Yeah. Fucking did it. <laughs> Uh, so I think that's all the Star Wars news we got. Can we move on past that? Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next part of the podcast. This is where we talk about the video game section. And the things I want to talk about first is I want to talk about uh, Mortal Kombat. I, uh, like I said, I don't have Mortal Kombat. Uh, but this, I, don't have, I don't have the new one. I don't have the new one either. Even though everybody keeps saying because I play fighting games all the time anyway. People be asking me, you got Mortal Kombat? You got Mortal Kombat? No, I don't have fucking Mortal Kombat. I don't like Mortal Kombat. But... I do like the new characters that they announced. That's why I'm going to talk about this. So, the new character, now, I can't remember everybody. Okay. So, Eli, they have the Joker. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they have Spawn. Yeah, Spawn. And the Terminator. The Terminator, yeah. Yeah. So, I thought they were pretty cool. And no, they already said uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is not going to be the voice of the Terminator. Oh, really? Damn yeah. it. Damn it. So, sorry you can't get that. But... Yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say about Mortal Kombat. I just thought those characters are pretty cool. Mortal Kombat is just kind of just doing whatever the fuck they want to nowadays. Yeah. Last one had Jason and Freddy and, and that's, Leatherface. I, did, I and, do have that one. That, that's the last one I have. I got that one too, but I never played it. Yeah. And so. I, I, you know, I play. I mean, it's all right. It's fun. You know, the, 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 the those, the, that, those DLC characters are okay. You know, the Predator's fun, you know, but some Predator of them other. on yeah. there. Yeah. The, but uh, some of those, like like Leatherface, is really stiff. I thought. You know. I mean, but he's stiff in the movies. Yeah, well, you know, I guess it's a chainsaw, but it's just his moves are slow. He's like one of those slower, powerful guys. You gotta, you know. Is Michael he doesn't Myers have any cool oh, cameras? Is Michael Myers on there? No, it's just Jason Leatherface. Freddy Krueger was on the one before. Okay. That had an alien too, I believe. Oh, cool. Okay. No, the alien is in this one. That's right. Alien, Predator, Freddy, or no, Jason Leatherface. I think that's it. Cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll see when that comes out. Also, 
Uh, they also had a demo, which this news I thought was pretty big, but since the Spider-Man news came out, everybody forgot about this shit, that they actually released that 20-minute demo of the Avengers, Marvel's Avengers, that video game they got coming out next year. Yeah. And I did a reaction on it. You know, I actually got some pretty good hits on it. I think, you know, that's probably one of my uh, biggest videos I had this, this month. So thanks for whoever shared that or liked it. Uh, I just want to give just my quick background of what I thought about the video. It was pretty cool. I was already sold on it. Everybody's saying now they're sold on it, but I don't see any difference in the graphics whatsoever. At least we got a chance to see the gameplay of it. Uh, and everybody played differently. That's what I liked about it. Iron Man was pretty much like the aerial guy, you know, air combat. Thor was pretty much Kratos from God of War. You know, same <laughs> air combos didn't really matter. Uh, Captain America was pretty much like a brawler, you know, throwing guy. Uh, Black Widow was basically Tomb Raider. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I even think the same people that made those Tomb Raider games made this game. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so that's why she got the two guns and she flips and hops like that. Like, okay, I know how to play this game. It's so simple. Hulk, I don't know. Hulk felt like a platformer? Like Super Mario? Like he was just jumping around. Like jumping that. around, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. like, and but he was slow. I was like, why? Come on, man. I, I, I like everybody's fighting everybody's section except the Hulk. The Hulk, and yeah, that's and the one I should like the most. Yeah, and the old and that that old Hulk shit looked like it was gonna be a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Hulk does not look fun. Hopefully they fixed it. Everybody else looks fun. He's the only one that didn't look fun. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm probably gonna fall a lot as the Hulk. <laughs> right, like you got him jumping and platforming, like oh man. Now Black Widow actually to me was like one of the most fun ones because she actually had a boss fight with Taskmaster. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and, and, of course, Taskmaster is going to be the, the main bad guy of her movie also. So I thought that was pretty So it's nice, perfect timing for that because they both will come around the same time. Uh, the Taskmaster fight was fight. I didn't like I She went invisible. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. And, of course, Taskmaster, if you're invisible, he can't find you and shit like that. But me personally, I think Taskmaster threw that fight. But I'm pretty sure they worked that into the plot and the thing of it also. So overall, the game is sold. I'm definitely going to get it. Um, I can't wait. That's like I said. So everybody was bitching about it. I don't know what you were bitching about then. I don't know what you're bitching about now. So <laughs> yeah, let's move past that. Can we move on to the next part of the podcast? Sure. Here's where we, oh, here we go. Okay. So this is the part of the podcast where we should talk about the comic books, with the comic book bullies, and we're going to talk about all the comic books that came out. Well, not all of them, just a few of them that we liked. Oh, uh, and Eli, I guess I'll go first, or? Sure, because oh. I don't remember what I read again. Okay, cool. Let me <laughs> knock this bad boy out. So, we're going to do Powers of Ten, three. Not Powers of X, Powers of Ten. <laughs> so, it's a difference. Fuck, let me find out what happened in this book. I'm trying to remember. Okay, so, this book is in the future. This is, but not in the future, future. A hundred years in the future. Just that, you know, okay. where we left off with uh, Apocalypse, got the, you know, that thing... From the from the guy. Oh, and we know the names of his four horsemen. Now, remember, we were confused on is that Magneto? Is that Groot? So we know who those guys are now. Okay. Okay. So those are Apocalypse New Four Horsemen. So uh -huh. that is Wolverine. Wolverine is there. Uh, that is not Magneto. Magneto is actually um a clone. You know, like the Chimera Chim Chimera clone, like uh Rasputin was. Okay. So this is a clone also, but this clone was taken from Polaris and Emma Frost. And it's combined to make a Magneto type clone dude. You know, okay. Polaris, <laughs> of course, his daughter or whatever like that. One of his daughters. Uh, that wasn't Groot. That was Kr Krakoa. You know, Krakoa is the entire island. So Krakoa made himself like an avatar. You know, kind of like Ego from, from the movie. Ego Living Planet. So that's yeah. what Krakoa is. And of course, the, the third, the Last guy is Scorn, Corn, Porn, that guy. The guy yeah. with the sun in his head. Okay. So, anyway, the book picks up. The humans have a church worshiping the Sentinels. And they're doing something to babies. I don't know what they're doing. They're, like, burning stuff in the babies, making them robots or something like that. It's really fucked up. I almost stopped reading the book to begin with. But anyway, before they could do any more <laughs> fucked up shit to babies, the X-Men uh, burst through the door. But it wasn't all the X-Men. It was like 40 X-Men or something like that. Rasputin and Cardinal and stuff like that. So they start fucking up these humans. So like, they're like, why are you doing this shit to the babies? You know, why are you, you fuckers are crazy? So Nimrod, back at his base at what the, the Ascension Tower or something like that, Nimrod and the, the sexy Omega Sentinel or whatever like that, she's like, oh, the humans and mutants are fighting each other. We need to go over there and stop them. And Nimrod like, I don't give a fuck what the humans and mutants do. Let them kill each other. I don't care. I got better stuff to do, you know. 
They're like, okay, suit yourself. So the Mega Sentinel takes some other Sentinels. They go to the church, start fucking everybody up. And, you know, and they just see these big, big ass Sentinels and Rasputin just like, oh, we're not going to win this. And, and Scorn, Corn, whatever the dude's name is, he's like, well, I got a black hole in my head. Y'all come any closer, I'm going to take this shit off, kill everybody in here. And the Mega Sentinel like, oh, you ain't going to do that. Oh, oh, watch me. So, uh, to, before, boy, before we do that, let me back up. Apocalypse is with them also because Apocalypse said, I'm going to come to the church with you and start fucking shit up. Uh, Apocalypse, that Magneto clone, and Wolverine, they actually find the thing they were looking for. What they find is actually when and where Nim uh, Nimrod was invented and where it's created. So they have the data on that information now. Uh, Apocalypse gives the information to Wolverine and tell Wolverine, you have to take this information, you need to get it to Moria, Moria McTaggart. And like, what about you? Don't worry about me, I'll hold them all. So Wolverine uh, goes through the portal that Krakoa makes and gets back to the base. While they're doing that, Apocalypse faces off between like 100 Sentinels, 100 Nimrods, just fucking all of them up. Because he's Apocalypse, you know. So, when that happens, that's when Scorn is just like, or Corn, whatever dude's name is. He's like, okay, y'all don't believe what I'm going to do? And then he takes his, his helmet off. But his helmet has a black hole in the middle of it. So, he kills everybody in that base right there. You know, everybody's gone instantly. Uh, Wolverine is back in the Krakoa base. And he wakes up Maria Mataga. And he tells Maria, okay, I got the information. You need to take this information to find exactly what's going on. And and she's like, what about you? And you're like, don't worry about me. This world is done. Uh, Scorn already killed everybody. Nimrod's going to kill everybody. This world is done. Uh, and Wolverine looks at Maria like, you ready? She's like, yeah, I'm ready. And he stabs the shit out of her. Kills her. Because he knows. Stabs, stabs shit out of who? M Moria. Because remember, oh, she, she, yeah, Moria Mataggart. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because remember, she, she, uh, you know, reincarnates. Yeah. What life was? What life was this? This was the ninth life. That's the thing. Okay. Did that show? I don't remember which all lives. How? Right. Fuck it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is the ninth life. So we've been thinking this is the future of the other timeline. No, this is a whole other timeline. So okay. this is the ninth timeline. So. That uh, remember when we were reading the other book and they were going through the timelines and they and they were like apocalypse was in this war that never ended. Mm -hmm. That was a timeline we were reading the whole time and not knowing that. Oh okay. Yeah, so that timeline is fucked. Wolverine kills Morgan Retagger strictly so she can re, uh, you know, reincarnate with the knowledge of of everything the Sentinels did, like where Nimrod came from, where the Mega Sentinels came from, where Chimera came from, where. Mr. Sense came from. So the tenth life, she has all that information, told Charles, told Magneto, so they're trying to go in a different direction from what they did before. So that's pretty much the story. So plot twist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty probably some other shit happened in the book, but whatever. Uh overall, I'm gonna give the book a four point five out of five. We actually had Wolverine action, Wolverine kill somebody. Oh, I was this is the first book I've ever rooted for Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, Jonathan Hickman actually, this was this is the book you shouldn't have skipped on, Eli. I know you was ready to jump off this train, but this one you should have stayed with. Well, it wasn't at my comic shop. I didn't think it came out. There was no new X books to, this week at my place, at my bookshop. Yeah. So they must have either sold out or whatever, because I, I, I went, look, I thought House of X was coming out. Yeah, I but it was right because that's what the one that was last week. So we thought it was gonna alternate, but nah, this one came out. So, so I'm, I, I'm yeah. actually kind of pissed because I was actually starting to get attached to Brass Pute and the Cardinal. They're dead. He just <laughs> fucking blew up that universe. So I'm like, shit. All right. Well, I didn't read much. Um, I got the Guardians here. You want? Did you want me to do the Guardians? Yeah, or you want do the Guardians. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, number eight, Donny Cates, y'all. Uh, the, the, what was it called? The Universal Church of Church Truth? Of Truth. Uh -huh. Yeah, they basically um, have uh, captured all the Guardians except, uh, uh, was it Moondragon and uh, somebody else? Groot? Yeah, the only two that got away. Yeah, <clears throat> and they go find uh, Rocket, who's dying. Um, and it basically, we go through Rocket's life. You know, flashback of all the shit Rocket's been through. And, uh, 
he's like, yeah, I, he's like, and Groot is like pissed off. He's like, why'd you just leave? We're family. He goes, I don't want you to see me like this. I want you to remember me how I used to be. He's like, I, I don't want, you know, I don't want you to see me as this like withered old, you know, rodent thing that's barely, can barely stay alive. He's like, well, we need your help. We got to go, f- you know, we got to go save our friends. He's like, okay, well, hold on. I got to get changed. And then he's got this big giant like Gundam mech suit. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Transformers Gundam Wings mobile suit. Right. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. So pretty cool, a lot of fun. Um, oh, yeah, there's some shit at the end with, uh, where Peter's talking to his dad and um, they're creating a new – they got a new hive. The Church of Truth is creating a new hive. Mm-hmm. And uh, But then it reveals that it's not just one. There's a bunch of them. Right, and they think it's Warlock, but I don't think any of them is Warlock. I think it's the Magus. Okay. Just my assumption. Like, nothing yeah. go by, but that's what I think. Yeah. So, pretty cool. I give it a four out of five. This was fun. I mean, I'm digging this Guardians book, even though, like I said, I'm not very well-versed in cosmic side of Marvel. But um, yeah. And, and I thought the, the Groot and Rocket argument was really well done, too. Yeah, that was that was poignant. You know, it really showcased their relationship. And, mm-hmm. You know, um, that whole theme of family, you know. Yeah, but like, I, you're I, not going to see yourself die, but we will. So, yeah, you know, like, that's 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 some strong stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I enjoy this book. I, I, I keep forgetting who's who sometimes because, like I said, I'm not familiar with these characters as much. But I, I'm digging the story. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Whew. This is going to be a rough one. You thought X was going to be a rough one. This, this shit going to be a rough one. Okay. Superman, year one, number two. Oh, yeah. you, you sucker. <laughs> By Frank Miller. You know sucker. I was going to. I had to get it. I had to get it. <laughs> if anything, it's like looking at a car crash. You, you got to turn your neck to see what's going on with this. <laughs> Shit. Okay. So, Superman is in the Naval Academy. You know, they had to shave his head to be in the Naval Academy, but it took like three clippers to do it because, you know, he's Superman's hair and stuff like that. And he's just breezing through the Naval Academy. Like, it's nothing for him, you know. Uh, he he has super hearing, so he can hear how hard everybody else is working. Like, oh, this dude's about to fall out. This dude's lungs about to collapse, and he's just like breezing through it. Uh, they have him doing like marksman training class stuff like that. Turns out he's the greatest marksman to ever live, you know, because his, the gun you know has no kickback to it and has no recoil because he doesn't feel it because he's Superman. So every single shot he makes hits the exact same bullseye, like 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 Will Smith on on Suicide Squad. He's shooting oh, he's, like that. Well, so they just, just blow, he's not just blowing the bullets or something. And he could, but he doesn't do that. He's just like like shooting stuff like that. So they're like, so they he's so good. They're like, okay, get this guy out of training right now. Make him a Navy SEAL right now. <laughs> we got to get this guy out of training. Just put him on the field. So he goes there, and he, his his new captain is a uh, Captain Jacob Kirksberg. Now, I've always when I was reading, I was like, why does that name sound familiar? And then I looked it up, and I was like, oh fuck, Jacob Kirksberg is the real name of Jack Kirby. Like, what does this have to do with anything? I have no idea. He's just his, <laughs> he's just there. That's just his his commanding officer, and he just he's saying stupid shit to him like, "Uh, March corn picker, <laughs> you pig liquor." You know, he kept calling him like some old farm shit. You know, because he's from Kansas. You know, uh, and while he's running, every time he's running by the beach, Superman keeps hearing stuff on in the ocean. He keeps saying, "Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, they're beautiful." Uh, Captain, can you see him? And you're like, oh, that's just, and, and basically Superman is using his telescopic vision and he's seeing mermaids. So oh. one night when he, yeah, one I, night I when he's, he's, he can see their mascara. <laughs> <laughs> he probably could. I mean, it's Superman, so fuck it. So one night when he, you know, sleeping, where well, everybody else is sleeping, he sneaks out of bed and goes down to the ocean and finds the mermaids. Finds the mermaids down there, and he meets the mermaid. Uh, and her the head mermaid down there is named Lori Lamars. Now, this may sound weird, but that, that, actually, that name sounds that name sounds familiar. Yes, because back in the Silver Age in the seventies and sixties, like that, Superman was in love with a mermaid named Lori Lamars. So it's actually oh, okay. you know history like that. So this is Frank Miller's spin on it. So yes, he's down there with the mermaid, swimming with the mermaid stuff like that, and he finds out there's a nuclear sub that landed down there that's attacking the people. He tries to, you know, help everybody he can, but time's flying. He's got to get back to the base before they find out he went AWOL. So he goes back there, you know, blah, blah, blah. But they get a call. The The Navy SEALs get a call that some pirates have attacked this thing or whatever like that. So the Navy SEALs go out there and try to save this boat. 
the Navy SEALs just shoot everybody on the boat. It's like that. But Superman doesn't shoot anybody. He just sees everybody else shooting everybody. Uh, but the one guy that he was supposed to shoot, he has a grenade in his hand. And then, and then you know, Kurtzberg or Jack Kirby, whoever, you know, is pissed off at Superman. You know, Kent, why didn't you take that guy out? Now look at him. He got this grenade and he's going to kill everybody in the boat. So Superman rushes over there before anybody can find him, grabs the grenade, holds it in his hand, and blows the, and the grenade blows up in his hand, but, you know, didn't blow up anything up. And he just tells his captain, oh, it was going to do it. It didn't blow up. And, and Kurtzberg was like, yeah, whatever. So basically Superman gets court-martialed for that. Because he didn't, he basically he didn't follow direct order, you know. And it was also some shit where he got into a bar fight with anything like that. So all that shit compiled together, uh, they kick him out of the navy. They're like, you, you're done. You disobeyed a direct command. You got to go. You act like you don't want to shoot anybody. We can't have a, a guy in the military that's supposed to do this and don't do that. So he like fuck it. He just decides to go back to find his mermaid girlfriend, you know. Goes find his murder with girlfriend. They fall in love, stuff like that. She like, I want you to be my dad. Who's your dad? Poseidon. You know, the Greek god or Roman god. I can't remember one of them. So, Poseidon hates Superman. <laughs> Reason he hates Superman is because Superman wants his daughter. And he thinks that if he marries his daughter, that's going to make... He thinks Superman is after his throne. So, he like, no, this guy got to go. So, what does Poseidon do? He says... Release the Kraken. So Superman got to fight a Kraken. Kraken kicks okay. the shit out of Superman. Oh, <laughs> Even really? eats him. <laughs> yeah. but uh, And while he eats him, he's like, yes, daughter, because no one will have you but me. You will fulfill the daughter. You will fulfill the duties of uh, your mother, my wife. <clears throat> and I mean all her duties. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? You know, okay. So Superman punches his way out of the Kraken. <laughs> And like beats the shit out of the Kraken, it's a bunch of they get into a fight like that. And then once the Kraken is defeated, Poseidon doesn't even fight Superman. He's like, you know what? You beat the Kraken, you beat my champion, you can have my throne. Poseidon just leaves, just, just swims away. And Superman sits on the throne, and now he's the with with his mermaid girlfriend, and now he's the king of Atlantis. The end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's. A lot of shit that happened in this book. It felt like about three or four stories mixed mass in with one. I didn't know where the fuck the story was going. Like, first you got the Navy, then you got him at the King of Atlantis. Like, okay. That's that's the story. Oh, and Joe Marita's uh, artwork, ugly as shit. <laughs> that didn't change. So, <laughs> Still eight bucks? <laughs> yeah, still, still expensive as fuck, long as fuck. Frank Miller is still weird as fuck with his storytelling. Like, Damn, this is not 80s Frank Miller. <laughs> so, I still think he hates Superman because, like I said, he got Superman and Navy SEAL. He got Superman still doing weird-ass telepathic powers and shit. You know, even though Superman, he was on, he was a Navy SEAL watching his own teammates shoot people. And didn't give a shit. He's like, I'm, well, as long as I don't do it, it's okay. Like, they're still killing people. So, fuck it. I think this book is slightly better than the last one. Still all over the fucking place. I give it a 3 out of 5. It was a nice train wreck. Whatever. <laughs> All I got. Okay. Uh, well, the other, other book I got here is Batman City of Bane, number 77. Um, so let's see. What was going on here? I don't remember. See, I read these. Oh, remember uh, Damien and Gotham, Gotham Girl sees Damien sneaking in, in Gotham. Yeah. So, yeah. First off, about Damien fucking traps Gotham Girl with some like magic. Easily. <laughs> yeah. And he's talking shit. He's talking all this mad shit. He goes up to fucking, uh, what's his face? Uh, Thomas Wayne Batman. Mm -hmm. He's beating the shit out of everybody. He goes to Thomas Wayne Batman. He's like, yeah, man, you ain't shit. I'll kick your ass. And like, you know, because I'm fucking robbing motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And then fucking, um, they end up fighting and Batman gets the best, or Thomas Wayne Batman gets the best of them, brings them back to the Wayne Manor. Where fucking we see Bane snap uh, Alfred's neck. In front of Robin. Right in front of him. He's like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. And then meanwhile, that whole time, I don't know what's going on with Bruce Wayne. Because I, I hadn't read it in a while. Yeah. But it's he's, like they're in Paris or something. Yeah. they're Him and him and uh, Selena are fucking around in Paris. Yeah. Bruce Wayne's like been recovering from something. Somebody must have kicked his ass. Oh, uh, Catwoman. But, um, yeah, she Catwoman slit his kicked throat. his ass? Yeah, she slit his throat. Why? Oh, really? I don't really oh, I... know why, but 
Yeah. I, I did not know that. And she's nursing him back to health. Yeah. Weird as okay. fuck, man. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but she's like, are you ready to do this? We got to go fucking back to Gotham City and whip ass. So. Right. And you, you got to do it my way or some whatever she says. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. I don't know. Three out of five. Uh, I thought I, I did enjoy Damien talking shit. You know, I thought that was funny. You know, the whole shot. I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be shocked that we know he's coming back or that Al forgot his or, yeah. or his clay yeah, face I, or some shit or something. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, shit, really? I was like, yeah, but this. Uh, I I, mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to go three out of three point five out of five. Cause it was awesome. Just watching Robin just beat the shit out of people. Even the yeah. way he was talking shit to, to uh, Thomas Wayne. He like, oh, yeah. like when he punched when he punched him and he was like, oh, yeah, you must be my grandson. Like, bitch, I'm not your grandson. You, you're a fake-ass Batman. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, all the shit he was talking. Yeah, that was the best part. Yeah. The- you know, it was just watch, watching Damien talk shit and kick ass. And, you know. and then get his ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, then get his ass kicked. You know? <laughs> I mean, I was actually kind of rooting for him for a second. You know? Yeah, but, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> Batman. I mean, it may be a fake Batman, but it's still Batman. So you know yeah. we're going to be his granddad. Like, you're not, my, you're not my Batman. Or you're not Batman. You're not my dad. You're not my grandpa. Or somebody else from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then when he finally caught him, he was like, "You're my grandson. You got my blood flowing through me. You need to learn this lesson, you know." So yeah, yeah. He, he beat the shit out of him. So yeah. So oh yeah, like I said, it was. I don't know what's happening. You know, I don't, I, I don't really I, know what's going on either. I just I kind of just like the insanity of it. Yeah, like I stopped. I stopped reading. Oh yeah, because Zaz and Scarecrow are cops. They're cops in Gotham. Yeah, it's, it's, Gotham's really weird right now. <laughs> So, so I, I like I said, I, I kind of gave up on Batman during the whole nightmare thing that yeah. was going on, and I I finally just picked back up like a couple issues ago, seventy five I mm-hmm. think, when this new arc started. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so because they said Tom King is gonna drop a big revelation that's gonna reveal something like something life changing about Batman. I'm like, what what is that? Is it is it's it probably supposed- the Alfred thing? Is it Alfred dying, or is Batman gay or something? I don't know. I mean, as soon as he leaves the book, Alfred's coming back anyway. Yeah. Which he only got, like, three issues left of some shit anyway, so what? Yeah, what? he's only going to 80, right? Yeah, so, like, what fucking difference does it make? Yeah, so. Hey, look, back then, man, had about to reboot the universe anyway. <laughs> so none that's, of this shit fucking matters. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, okay, so the book I got is, uh, this might be the last one. I don't know. Uh, Valkyrie, Valkyrie number two. Okay. Okay. So, like I said, when we left, last left off, uh, Bullseye stabbed Heimdall, and you know he was riding his Pegasus, and he had the Dragon Fang, which uh, gave his uh, his fighting skills a ten point bump or some shit like that. So now he's this awesome ass fighter, and now he's just hand to hand fighting Valkyrie like any shit. Even though she's super strong as Garden Strength, like said, he can fight her hand to hand, take punches from her, punch her back, all kind of shit like that. And even when she's not paying attention, he controls the Pegasus. The Pegasus kicks Valkyrie in the back of the head. You know, damn near, you know, had got a head spin and shit like that. And right before he's about to kill uh, Valkyrie, Heimdall uh, stands up. He's like, yeah, you ain't killed me yet. And punches the shit out of Bullseye. And Bullseye takes the punch from an Heimdall the Asgardian. Because Dragon Fang makes him just that much strong. So he's like, yeah, I took your punch. And then stabs Heimdall again. <laughs> you know. And then uh, that gives Valkyrie just enough time to recover. So she realized, okay, if I can get that sword out of his hand, he'll go back to being human. But as long as he holds that sword, I can't do shit with him. So while he's, she's, he's messing around with Heimdall, she sneaks behind him, puts him in an arm choke or something like that, breaks his wrist, you know, to make him drop the dragon fang. He drops the fat dragon fang. He goes back to normal. He was like, oh, yeah, you, you're a good fighter, Valkyrie, but watch this. And so he kicks Heimdall off the roof because they fight on top of the roof, right? Kicks Heimdall off the roof while she's fought, while Heimdall's falling. She's like, oh, shit. So she jumps off the roof off, though, also. Uh, tries to fall faster than he's falling. Throws out her yum, yum join, under join, her weapon that transforms into anything. Makes it to a rope and grabs Heimdall's leg right before he hits the ground. And she's like, wait, did Spider-Man do this shit and kill somebody? You know, she was a flashback to Gwen Stacy or some shit whatever so she he she gently lets Heimdall down to the ground and then she realized that death is all around her because she can see when somebody's about to die that's because Bullseye is throwing the damn uh sword at her trying to kill her she was like okay well he threw the sword maybe they'd make him back human so she tries to like make the sword come to her like Moyer with Thor 
Bullseye makes the, the, the sword flies past her and back to Bullseye. She's like, oh shit. Well, that, as long as he got that sword, he's going to kill everybody in this street right here. And he's going to smile while he's doing it. So there's only one thing for me to do. So she turns under Yorn, or whatever the name of the thing, the all weapon. She turns into something like brass knuckles. And she breaks Dragon Fang. She cries when she does it, but she breaks Dragon Fang because she realized that was the last weapon that Broomhield had. But the weapon's got to go, otherwise, Bullseye won't be, you can't be killed. So after Dragon Fang is gone, Bullseye turns back to hum human and she punches the shit out of him, but she punches him just enough that, you know, just to knock him out without taking his head clean off. Because, like I said, she's an ass guardian. She got his guardian strength, so she can do that. But the thing is, Heimdall is bleeding out. And Heimdall, you know, his last wishes is telling uh, Jane, like, whatever you do, don't send me to Valhalla. Like, you want to go to Valhalla? I've been there, done that. I don't want to go to Valhalla. What I want to see is the end of the end of the universe. I want to see how this universe ends. You're like, okay, well, let's go. Like, but I'm dying. And you're not. Your soul can come with me. So his soul, Heimdall's soul, lifts from his dying corpse and stands up next to uh, Jane. And Jane says, let's go to the journey into mystery or whatever the shit that Thor's first was getting there. And that's the end of the book. So. Okay. Pretty cool. I'll tell you this. Whoever drawing the shit, that artwork is awesome. Oh, like yeah? Kato, Kino, some like shit like that. Uh, Jason Aaron, pretty cool story. I kind of knew that's how they were going to beat uh, Bullseye, that they were going to have to just kill the sword. So, um, overall, 3.5 out of 5. Cool issue. I know people are going to hate on it because they think it's SJW because it's SJW Valkyrie and Jane Foster is still trying to be a thing. But overall, it was a cool entertaining story. Bullseye made a cool, you know, cool villain. Whatever. Cool. Oh. Uh, you got anything else? Well, the only thing, other thing I read was Transformers '84. Mm -hmm. uh, Gomer hooked me up with this, and this made me realize how much I don't know about the Transformers. <laughs> I don't know shit about the Transformers. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit! So this is basically a prequel to the old Marvel comic room back in '84. Oh, and the old so, Marvel comic is is canon to the six one six. Okay. Like, when I was reading The Avengers, they used to make references to that book. Oh, really? No shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, basically, this starts out with, you know, it, it, it starts out with the cyber, or the 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 Civil War on Cybertron, you know, that the, the planet, Cybertron's, like, been blown off its orbit or, or its axis, and it's flying into a star or whatever, so they're trying to figure out what to do, how to save everybody, and, you know, building the Ark and shit. Um, so they do, they build the Ark, they fly out, you know, to Earth back in like, you know, medieval times and shit. And, um, and a bunch of Transformers that I don't know basically meet up with the Vikings and shit. Kind of what happens. Okay. Um, I don't, you know, because it takes place before, you know, the 84 comic. All our, all the like Prime and all those main characters, Megatron, all those motherfuckers, all the main characters are still sleeping, because that's what happens. Remember, they wake up. Oh, right, that, that's right. 84. They they land in dinosaur age and they just stay asleep the whole time. Yeah, they're still sleeping all those millions of years and shit. But this basically is about the trans. Some Transformers actually woke up, and it ain't the ones that I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we'll we, we'll listen to Instruments of Destruction and they'll yeah they have yeah. a two hour breakdown of this one comic. So yeah, so uh, I mean the art is cool. It's got that old school G one flavor. You know what I mean? But I I found it a little confusing. But so I'll give it a three out of five. I mean it's cool. It's just like okay, I don't know any of these people, and I I I guess if I am a huge, I'm not like you know Gomer. You know, Gomer like level. He he bleeds this shit. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. So I'm sure he would appreciate. True Transformers fans would appreciate the the shit out of this book. Right. You know, on all the references, I was just like, I, I you know, I just remember the cartoons a lot and some of the toys, and I read some of the comics. But how much you want to bet on the next comic cast episode? He just takes over the show and just talks about this issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, isn't it just him and? There's only two of them, right? This week or something. Is I it? didn't listen to it yet. I just saw like the I saw like the preview. It was like only oh like he's gonna couple... run wild. He's gonna run wild. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna just take over. Gomer Unleashed. That's the name of that episode. Need to be whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, three out of five. I mean, it was fun, even though I don't know what's going on. So 
Cool. Cool. I, I got one I more got. book. I got one more book. But I'm not okay. going to go in detail about it. I just want to just mention it. Uh, History of Marvel Universe Part 2, number two. Oh, okay. yeah. I didn't see it. Shit. Yeah, so that book uh, is pretty much, it just starts like in the 19th century, basically when Destiny and Mystique, you know, get married. And like carries on to, I don't know, something. Blade gets his power, some shit like that. Basically, all this book is, is Marvel's retconning everything they did in a nice, con, uh, condensed story so any kind of retcon they did they're basically saying that oh no this is how it's always been when it really hasn't like in the story they got like the uh the bc avengers you know when odin and and uh you know the original black panther you know made a team and then they had it when nick fury had a team in the 50s you know with saber tooth and basically that was like his version of the first event like the first time nick fury made an avengers team and oh and remember how you know in the 60s when they wrote the book like uh Reed Richards and the thing met in the Vietnam War and Frank Miller met oh, in the Vietnam I, War. I heard some about like, yeah, they were retconning a bunch of shit about Vietnam. They read yeah. Like like, you know, Rhodes was in Rhodey was in uh Vietnam. So they changed that according okay. to this book. So it's no longer the Vietnam War, it's the Siet Cong War. They changed it. Oh, is that like some made that made up country or some shit that Right. And Somebody they said was Mandarin from, was over that country who, or whatever. Who, yeah, Mandarin was from that country. Yeah, just some yeah. shit they just made up. They didn't say when it took place. It just happened. Whenever. So, it's done. So, yeah. Punisher is no longer a Vietnam vet. He's a Siet Cong vet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so now they can place the timeline whenever the fuck they want to. So, they can just whenever. Uh, so, basically, that, if you want to... That's wanna, still better than, like, the Gulf War vet. That he yeah, was the Gulf War running. thing, and it, yeah, trying to make him younger and shit. You know. Yeah, that was like, whatever. okay, whatever. So yeah, I, honestly, it's pretty interesting because a lot of here's the thing: the biggest myth people have about Marvel, and this book single handedly uh, proves what I've been saying the entire time. People saying that Marvel never retcons and Marvel never reboots the universe. That is bullshit. Because <laughs> this book pretty much is just nothing but it's not. I won't say it's a reboot. But what they do is just like whatever happened like the last five or ten years, they just cherry pick here and there and say, okay, boom, here's the universe. Now, some shit that comes, if, if it's not in this book, then it means they ignored it. And not that they retconned it, and not that it, it just, it just never fucking happened. Fuck it. You know. So, what this book does is just take a condensed uh, run through of what they want you to remember in the Marvel Universe. If it's not in this book, fuck it. Just pay no attention to it. But if it's here, <laughs> That's when it happened. It's saying when it happened, how it happened. Uh, you know, like, remember how Blade was uh, bitten by Morbius and that's how he got his powers and shit like that? Fuck that. That never happened. Oh, yeah? Well, <laughs> he how did he get his powers? Yeah. Uh, he got bitten by Deacon Frost, like, back in the 1800s, some shit like that, and that's got his powers. He's, he's immortal. So he's been in the round life since the 1800s, huh? Or the 1900s. I can't remember. One of those things like that. But anyway, that, all that bullshit is a retcon. That's basically what I was trying to say. <laughs> okay. Because he's been, because they had one book where I read that he was teaming up with Luke Cage's dad in back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And he had his blade powers and shit then, you know. So, Marvel just does whatever the fuck they want to because they're Marvel. They don't just make no huge announcement like DC, like, oh, we're going to reboot the universe. Boom. No, Marvel just cherry picks and just does whatever the fuck they want to. But this book damn near feels like a crisis. Like, it damn near feels <laughs> like... And that's what it, it feels like. Like they just, this is the way the universe is now. Read this shit. And this is how we're moving going forward. I, you know, that's cool. how I feel. So pretty interesting book. I'm going to sit down and read it again because that way you can, because if you want to know where the Marvel Universe, like what their canon is now, read this. Fuck whatever happened before, read this. And you know <laughs> where they're going. So that's all I got. Uh, oh, we got anything else? Uh, I'm dead. Um, that's all I got. Okay. Uh, like I said, we, we ran through a whole bunch of stuff. Hope this was not an epic one like we've been doing, these Lord of the Ring link <laughs> podcasts we've been doing. <laughs> uh, if you listen this long, definitely uh, listen to our sister podcast, Geek Sav. Eli, I'm going to give you some credit. The last episode you had, I want to say that is the best podcast Albert Geek had last week. Which one? Uh, the, the one where you talked like two hours on um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, the very last one. Yeah, the very last one. The most recent okay. one. Or maybe this okay. one. I don't know. Yeah, it was just the other day. Yeah, we just released that the other day. Oh, I don't know why I thought it was like two days ago or something like that. But anyway, awesome well, episode. 
Oh, uh, cool. Thanks. Yeah, it sounds like you, you're saving all the really good inter- introspective stuff for your own podcast. So it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let Leroy talk about this cartoon shit. <laughs> well, you but ain't seen the movie yet. I would I, definitely. I, seen it. I, I, I would so, talk the shit out of it on here if you've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. So I, I, I can't. I had no input on it right now. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> uh, also, yeah. the comic cast. Like I said, there's a new Transformer book came out that we know shit about. So uh, Ryan's gonna take over that show. <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> Yeah, I should listen to that, man. I just, I'm yeah, gonna listen to I, that. I listen yeah. to that. Uh, he also has another podcast, which is uh, this Geeks and Comics book. He's probably also going to talk about the Transformers book there. <laughs> uh, he also has another podcast called Instruments of Destruction, where he's probably even going to talk about the book then. So you probably that's going to be exclusively all about '84. Yeah, right. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also have uh, Hoodoo TV. Get Valiant. Get Valiant is dropping new podcast now. I listened to the other day, so they got like three guys on there now. So good for them. Ooh. Yeah, they got a new guy, yeah. Yeah, they got a new guy, so they're working and working that thing out. Uh, talking balls right around the corner. It, it, it's coming. It's like Galactus <laughs> right over our head. Yeah, yeah, a couple weeks, yeah. Yeah, we, we have only a few more weeks left, you know. <laughs> um, and, yeah, that's it. Next week we'll talk about some of the stuff. I'm pretty sure some even more wilder shit will happen, or maybe this Spider-Man thing will make some new noise. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we, we just sit back and just wait for the news to happen and just react to it from there. Because... Dumb shit is happening every week for some reason. Oh, Eli, we're also boycotting Olive Garden. Are we? That's fine. Yeah. We'll, even... we'll let you know next week what we're boycotting. I'm week. Italian, and I fucking, I don't eat at that place. <laughs> <laughs> I like the free breadsticks, but that's just me. Okay. <laughs> Until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Same bullet time, same bullet channel. Cool. cool.